everybody. Hopefully trying to get somewhat into a normal routine if that is possible. Um, we appreciate, or I appreciate, and Matt does as well, but I appreciate all the calls, the text, the cards, the food, um, the list goes on and on, on of what you all have done this past week for my family. It really does mean a lot. And um, just keep me in your prayers as time goes on. It'll be a rough week. Um, some of you all know and some of you don't, but this is the same week that my mother passed. So um, I guess that's kind of a good thing if you want to put it. It's all happened at once, but um, the days are less than a week apart. So um, for it'll be a definitely a rough week in the upcoming years. But as we try to get back into a normal routine, I ask that you continue to pray for us and we will continue to pray for you all as well. I know some of you are sick. Some of you have had deaths as well, and like I said, we're trying to get back into a normal routine, if that is even possible. So, saying that, this week, our fruit of the Spirit that we're going to talk about is peace. And peace is one of the qualities that Christians should have. We see in John 16, 33, that we have peace. Um, in verse 33, it says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus promises peace to all who follow him. So some people want to tie their peace to the circumstances that are going on um, at that certain time or due to their surroundings or circumstances that are going on around them. Um, that's how some people determine how they're going to act, how they're going to believe, how they're going to behave, how they're going to live. And we should not do that. Um, things around us can be painful, they can be troublesome, but Jesus says he will give us peace, and we have to believe that he will do so. Um, if he says it in the Bible, we believe the Bible is true. So he says that he will give us peace. So we should know that we have peace. And if we look at Jesus, the life of Jesus, you know, he never panicked. And when I was doing this devotional, I thought, well, you know, I never really thought about that. And it said that Jesus was always at peace. And he always knew how to handle trouble, how to handle conflict, um, how to handle problems, questions, whatever it is, without getting all worked up. And that's because he was at peace. And I tried my hardest to think of a situation where Jesus panicked, where Jesus didn't know what to do. Um, and the closest I came to is when he turned the tables over in the temple, but he didn't panic. He was mad. He took care of the situation. I could not think of a situation, of a story, if you will, of a scripture that showed Jesus panicking. And then I thought, you know, we're supposed to look up to God, look at the Bible for examples. And if we want an example of peace, Jesus was peace. He always had peace. And, and then I thought, well, how can this be? You know, he must be just, we know he was perfect. And we know that there's no one else like him. But Jesus was also human. And he had inner peace. So that is how, that's how he could never panic. He could never worry. He had inner peace. We can and we need to have that inner peace as well. We can and we do have it through Jesus Christ. That does not mean that we should be okay with what's going on in the world. Um, the first thing in my mind was rioting. And again, that um, is fresh on my mind because it's really big in Louisville. And we just came back from Louisville. And um, that is still going on nightly. Um, so it's, you know, you really have to be careful where you go. Which, you know, and I'm sure it's still going on in other places. Um, again, like I said, it's fresh on my mind in Louisville because we were just there. But... We should not be okay with that, and we should not be okay with the evil that our society has in it right now, but we can still have peace, and we can have peace with ourselves because our foundation is in Jesus Christ. 
So even though we don't have to agree with what's going on, but we don't have to participate, but we have that peace. We don't have to worry about it. We have to, we have that peace of knowing that God's going to take care of us if we stand up for what is right. In Isaiah 26, 3, it says, You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Isaiah states that peace is God's gift to those whose mind, minds are steadfast and trusting in him. There is no peace with God for those who are living a life of sin. For us to have peace with God, we have to have peace with ourselves. Do you worry? I do. We talked last week about how at some point of every day, we think about food, clothing, or the roof over our head. Do we ever worry about where our next meal will come from? Or how a certain bill is going to be paid? Or what's going to go wrong next? For us, it's what's going to break down on the truck next? Um, Because that seems to be happening a lot. But do we worry about that? I do, even though the Bible tells me if we worry, we are not at peace. One who is at peace knows that God will always take care of them. And I guess that I just never thought about it. But if I'm constantly worrying, if I'm constantly fretting over what's going to happen next, or this person doesn't like me, or, you know, just something, if I'm constantly in that fit of just worry, stress, I can't have peace. And I can't be calm. I can't take things in or be be a sensible person that I need to be at certain times if I'm always worried. And then it says, like I just said, the Bible says God will always take care of us. If I truly believe that, then why am I worrying? Why am I at peace? And I know part of that is human nature. I think I will always worry. I, that's just part of me. I'm going to worry about everything. You can ask Matt. And my poor daughter is the same way as I am. She worries about the littlest things that don't amount to hill beans. But she gets that from me. So I've got to take a step back. And I've got to ask, okay, God's going to take care of this. God's going to take care of me. I don't have to worry about it. And we see that in Matthew 6, verses 31 to 34. And it says, Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So like I said, I think most of us worry, even though we are told not to. Um, And, you know, in verse 32, it says, Your heavenly Father knows... You need things to wear, things to eat. He knows that. So don't worry about it. But that's hard. And so in this devotional, as I was reading this about peace, because we can't have peace if we're worrying, there's three steps to help us stop our worrying or calm our worrying or lessen our worrying, however you want to look at it. And the first thing to do is pray. The first thing we need to do to stop and to get peace for ourselves, talk to God. And when we talk to God, let's just not start off and saying, oh, this is so terrible. This happened today and this happened, this happened. And I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. And I don't know how I'm going to do this. And -and so-and-so is really upset with me because I didn't do something the way she wanted me to do it or whatever it is. But instead of jumping right into our prayer like that, start off with a praise. Start off with Something that you can say went good that day. Pray, and it could just be the simple thing that you woke up that morning. Um, Just start off with a praise when you um, start off to pray. Then we go into our petition. So we pray, we give praise, and then we go into our petition. Um, That's when we tell God, this is what I'm worried about. And it may seem kind of silly because God already knows before we ask, before we tell him, but it helps us. It helps us get it off of our chest. We've told somebody. We've told the person, the only person that can take care of all things. We've told him. And so that now we should start to feel better. We've let it off our chest. We're not worried anymore. We're not angry anymore. We're not stressed. We've told him about it. And then we're going to end our prayer again by giving thanks. So we start off with praise or I usually do a thanks when I start my prayer. I always start my prayers off with thank you. Um, 
Then we tell them what's wrong, but then we end with thanks. And it says, you might think, well, things are so bad, there's nothing to be thankful for. Well, like I said, there's something to be thankful for, whether it just be that you got up that morning, or you woke up and you were able to see, or you were able to walk, or, you know, whatever it is, the things we take for granted, there's always something to be thankful for. And we need to make sure we tell God that. We need to make sure we tell God that we're thankful for these things. So we're worried, we're stressed, we don't have peace. We can't have peace if we have that. And as Christians, we're supposed to have peace. We're supposed to have that fruit of the Spirit. So how do we get that? We're going to pray. And in our prayer, we're going to give petition. We're going to pray. We're going to praise Him. We're going to, you know, thank Him for what He's done. We're going then to tell him what we're worried about, what we're stressed about, what we're angry about, what's keeping us from having peace, and then we're going to thank him for the blessings he's given us, thank him for all that he has done. Then we will receive peace. And once we have peace with God, then we can start having peace with ourselves. Then once we have peace with God and ourselves, we can have peace with others. And that's what I want to look at now. I've got a few verses here. Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 3. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Paul tells us here that God wants his church united, at peace, and free from internal rivalries. And again, We can't have peace if we're worried about the person in front of us and what they're saying about us. We can't have peace if we just had an argument with the person to our left and we really wish they wouldn't come to church that day. And yes, that happens. That happens. We have people walk in and, oh, I wish they weren't there today. They didn't return my phone call yesterday. They just ignored me when I honked at them waving down the road. People do that. I call it pettiness, but it happens. It happens. We cannot have peace. And Paul tells us that God wants his church united and at peace. Again, in Colossians 3.15, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the peace rule your hearts. We see that we are supposed to have peace with one another in church, but is that the only place? Are we only supposed to have peace at church, which is what I just read? But where else are we supposed to have peace? Who else? Well, let's go to Hebrews 12, verses 14. It says, strive for peace with everyone. Romans 12, 18. It says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Um, It doesn't say live peaceably with just your friends, only the people you like, just the people who go to church with you. No, it says all people. That means everyone we are around each and every day. The people we pass in the car, the people we meet at the grocery store, the people at the bank, the people wherever you go, you're going to see somebody. And you say, oh, well, Paula, I don't go out of the house. Okay, the people who call you, the people who text you, the whatever, the workers that come over to your house if you're having something worked on, you will see people, your neighbors. You have to have peace with everybody. And then this brought up another point in this as well. We talked about worry before, but this is kind of where if, you're, if you have been offended or if you offend somebody, you can't have peace. You're not at peace if you're worried about, oh, well, I said something that somebody took the wrong way. If you think you've offended somebody, go and make it right. Go talk to them. And the same vice versa. If you've been offended, fix it. Fix it. Figure out why you were offended. Go to that person. If you wronged a person, go and fix it. Because until it's fixed, you won't have peace. One of the two parties is going to worry about it. Now, if you're the offender, you're probably not going to worry about it. If you're the offendee, you're going to worry about it. So the offender needs to go to the person they offended and make peace so that everybody can go about their way and they everybody can share peace with one another. Um... And again, I thought so too when I was reading this. It says, I like in Hebrews 12, 14, it says strive for peace. So it doesn't say that you're always going to have peace with everybody, but it's our job as Christians to strive for peace. And again, in Romans 12, if possible, that's the version of mine said, if possible. 
And then it says it depends on you. So that puts the burden on me. That points right at me and says, okay, Paula, this is on you. You need to do all you can to have peace. If you can't live peaceably, figure out why you can't live peaceably with that person and fix it to the best of your ability. So there is some leeway there. Um, just because it doesn't say that you'll always have peace with everybody. We know the ones who have been married, um, the ones who have co-workers, um, the list goes on and on. We're not all happy hunky-dory all the time. Um, if, But we see, but we have to strive, like it says in Romans, if possible, when it depends on you, do all that you can. Make sure you're the one living peaceably with all. If we start with love, which is the first fruit of the Spirit, and we have love, then like I said last week, that will turn into joy. We're going to be happy. If we're full of love and we're sharing that love, we're going to be happy. We're going to have joy. Then if we have joy, we're going to want to have peace. Because again, if we don't have peace, it's robbing us of our joy. And I hope you all see as the weeks have been, because this is our third week, they're like stepping stones. You have to have love, and then with love you get joy. That's the next step, and now we get peace. If we have all of this, we have peace, but we can't have one without the other. If we're not peaceful, we're not going to be lovable, and we're not going to be willing to love. If we're not joyful, then we're not going to worry about having peace. We're not going to worry about others. We're not going to care what they think or what they do. So we have to have all three of them. And that's what I want to talk about today is peace. Um, peace sometimes is a very hard thing. I think all of these um, at some point in time are hard. Um, loving someone who doesn't love you or loving someone that is um, completely committed to the world or living a life of sin and they know it's sinful and they don't care, um, it's hurtful. So that is very hard. That's not someone who's easy to love. And again, that joy, we're supposed to be happy all the time, right? Well, like I said, you've got those coworkers. You've got those customers. You've just got some of them that are really going to get under your skin. But we got to figure out a way to get with it or to deal with it and to have joy. And then peace. It's nice to have peace when everything's going hunky-dory and everybody's getting along and everybody agrees with you. But what about when we've offended somebody? Or what about if we, I don't know, did something wrong? And we don't want to fix it. How can we have peace? So I hope that this week that we will all work on our peace. I hope we've been working with the love and the joy and the peace. And like I said, they're all building blocks. So if we work on one, um, it's honestly working with all three of them. So I hope you all have a great week. Thank you for listening. And I will see you all next week. And I think next week is patience. And when I was looking up that... Um, I have, I was looking through two different books, and I've always learned it as patience. And um, one book called it Long Sufferings, and one book called it Trials. So we're going to learn about patience, and that is also something that I need to work on. So again, I hope you all have a great week, and I will see you all next week.